I'm gonna be going over my entire Robinhood portfolio in this video. I'm gonna show you guys every single stock that I own, my biggest winners and biggest losers of 2019. We're gonna end off the year really strong. Markets are doing crazy the past few days, past few weeks. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna be going over all of that. So welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Bruce Wang. And even if I was Batman, I would not be telling you guys I was Batman. So I always get that in the comments for whatever reason. So let's jump right into the portfolio so I can show you guys what I'll be, what I've been investing in for the last year plus now. So before I start, I just wanna go over a few things. If you guys wanna follow along with me and see every single stock in my portfolio, I'm gonna have, a, the links are gonna be in the description. It's gonna link to the M1 Finance uh, website because Robinhood doesn't have this type of feature where I can share my portfolio and you guys can just go into every single one. And this is the, the easiest way that I know how to do it. So just bear with me, um, just click on the links in the description and it'll, it'll lead you straight to the M1 Finance uh, website. But this is my Robinhood portfolio. It's, uh, it's, it's titled Robinhood right on top. Uh, links are gonna be in the description and you guys can follow along. So we are ending off the year really strong here. Portfolio value is $13,643. If I went back to the beginning of this year, let's jump back to the beginning of this year. So this is why it's cool to document everything. Um, I can literally go back to see how I actually was. And the first thing I could say is that I was a lot skinnier in this video. I'm probably 15 pounds skinnier in this video than I am now. I put on a lot of weight over the years. So let's take a look here. And uh, so beginning of 2019, my portfolio was only $2,000. So after aggressively funding my portfolio uh, over the past year now and uh, doing a lot more conservative uh, investments and with a little bit of luck from the stock market since the stock market went up a lot this year, my portfolio value now is over $13,000. So before I go over everything, I wanna to explain to you my strategy um, that I've switched to from since the beginning of this year now. So I'm doing dividend investing where I'm buying high quality dividends. Um, all, a lot of the companies that I'm purchasing stocks in, uh, you're gonna know about them, AT&T, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, all of these companies, you know them, they're name brand companies, and these companies, they pay you a dividend for just investing in them and you own a piece of that company. Being a dividend investor is almost the same thing as being a landlord owning a rental property, but instead you're owning a piece of the company and every few, and every few months you're gonna be collecting rent or dividends. And that's kind of the, the way that I see it as. And um, at the end of the day, you're always gonna own that piece of stock. You're, you're always gonna own that piece of property. And um, if the stock underperforms or if uh, for whatever reason, you need that money back. You can always sell it to uh, get back your equity in that um, from that company or from that piece of property. So I see a lot of parallels when when it comes to stock investing and div and uh, uh, real estate investing. So uh, just to get that out of the way. So that's why I do it. That's why I invest in dividends. My portfolio right now is thirteen thousand six hundred forty three dollars. And uh, if we take a look at the one year return, I'm up uh, $1,800, over $1,800, almost 16% of the portfolio. So this is not too bad. In the beginning of this year, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, the way I was investing in the beginning of the year was just all over the place. I was buying, I probably, this, since the beginning of this year, I probably went through 50 different types of stocks in this Robinhood portfolio. And uh, right now you can see that I'll only, I only have invested in 14 stocks at the moment. So one thing I've noticed in the last year is that if you focus your strategy or if I focus my strategy on one thing, it is going to grow a lot faster. But if you are, uh, you know, unorganized and you're kind of trying to do everything all at once, uh, nothing is going to happen. Basically, uh, that is what I realized. And um, I'm all in on dividend investing right now. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Uh, welcome to the Robinhood challenge. Um, every single week I update you guys with what I'm buying, why I'm buying it, um, how much dividends I'll be receiving from it and all that stuff. So I update you guys every single week with that. And you know, in the last week alone, the real estate sector has like tanked down like seven to 10%. I'm gonna be buying those dips. And um, in the last week I spent over a thousand dollars. I've invested over what 
um, I budgeted myself to invest. Every single week, I'm investing $300 uh, consistently now for over a few months now. I found $700 somewhere uh, in my bank account to throw in into these REITs. Um, the first REIT that I'm buying uh, over the last week now is Realty Income. Uh, Realty Income is a monthly paying dividend stock and one of, uh, and it's also on the S&P 500, which is like the biggest 500 companies in America. So. Uh, this company is profitable. This company is paying out dividends every single month. Um, it has been growing like crazy over the last five years. If you take a look at it, $25 up in the last five years, 55% returns. If you bought this stock way back in 2015, you would have seen a lot of gains on your portfolio. So if we take a look at all of my orders, if you add it all up, I bought 10 shares of this company in the last week. I've almost doubled up my position in this one uh, in the, of this one stock here. And uh, my total equity at the moment is almost $2,000, 13% of my portfolio. Currently the dividend yield, according to Google, is 3.77%. Uh, so for owning one share of this stock, you'll receive about 22 cents every single month, 26 times 22 cents. That's gonna be almost $6 every single month for the rest of this company's life. Uh, as long as they're profitable, they should be paying me almost uh, $6 every single month um, as long as I don't add any more shares, which I will be adding more shares. So the second stock that I purchased over the last week is LTC Properties. This is another stock in the REITs sector and I bought five shares. Actually, let's see the entire portfolio here. So looking at my order history here, in the last two weeks, I bought around 11 shares of this one stock. Um, LTC Properties is another company that is paying out monthly dividend income. Um, I talk a lot about monthly dividends in my uh, on my channel, so um, if you guys are kind of getting sick of that, let me know in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are loving the monthly dividends coming into your portfolio every single time. So currently at the moment, my average cost is $44.70 of, uh, of this stock, and the price right now is $44.55. So that is why my total returns is negative $6. But if you add in all of the dividends that I've received over the last year, let me do dividend history here. If you add in all the dividends that I've received over the last year, you can definitely see that, you can definitely see that even though the price dropped six, 7% in the last month, that I'm still up on my investments. Uh, I've been collecting dividends from this uh, one investment since October 31st, 2018. When you first start out, your dividend is gonna be a lot smaller because you're just investing with less capital. But as you get older, as you're making more money, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to invest more into these companies that you like. And um, eventually they'll be paying you out dividends uh, at a higher rate. And if you reinvest those dividends, you'll be getting paid out a lot faster and a lot more, a lot sooner. So those are the two stocks that I bought in the last week. So now let's go over my entire stock portfolio. I told you I only have 14 stocks here. And um, let's start with the first one, SPHD. This is a monthly paying dividend stock. Again, uh, currently it's $44. Um, I bought in when it was around $41.68. Uh, right now I own 60 shares. And total return so far, $141 not including uh, the dividends that I've been receiving throughout the year. Um, this is a high, this is my top stock. This is the one that I'll be investing into uh, for years to come. I'm, I'm trying to get to 100 shares as fast as possible, but right now this stock is a little bit overvalued in my opinion. And um, I'm kind of just waiting to see where it ends up, but I'm gonna slowly average my way in, even if it goes up in value. So SPHD is my one and only ETF in this portfolio. Uh, this helps me keep my portfolio very diversified so that even if like a crash does come, who knows if a recession is gonna come next year or not, but everybody's afraid of one. I'll be relatively safe because my all of my investments are not in just one stock, they're in uh, a diversified ETF. So the second stock in my portfolio is uh, Realty Income. I just talked about this. Uh, this is uh, the second biggest position in my portfolio. So I kind of don't want, I don't need to go over this again. The third stock in my portfolio is LTC Properties. This is the third biggest position in my portfolio. So since we went over this already, let's move on to the next one. So AT&T, this is one of my favorite uh, communication stocks. 
There's AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Uh, Verizon is also a really good stock to um, invest in for the long term, but um, I went with AT&T because uh, when I first purchased this stock, the dividend yield was around 7%, and the stock was very undervalued. There was a lot of FUD around this stock. There was a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and that's what made the stock so valuable to me because the uh, dividend yield was around 7%. I was buying these at like $20, $28, $29. And uh, right now I have 30 shares. Average cost is at $33.84. Total equity, $1,000, a little bit over $1,000. So I think this is the best uh, returns when it came to my entire portfolio uh, from AT&T. It is my number one stock for the year. So let's move on to the fifth stock in my portfolio. We have Starbucks, a really big name brand, blue chip stock. Um, $88.46. I have 11 shares. Total, total average cost at the moment is $82.71. And total return is at $63. I'm not gonna, I, I, can't, I can't be mad at that. $63 for just owning Starbucks. And I'm, and I'm getting paid dividend every three, every three months. So let's move on to the next stock here. I think this is like six or seven. We got Pfizer. Uh, I own 25 shares. Average cost is around $36 and total return so far is $80. I got a lot of hate comments about why I was buying Pfizer during the time that uh, they weren't doing so well. Uh, that's why it, take, it does take a little bit of courage when you're investing in um, stocks that aren't doing so well at that time. But uh, that is what I look for when um, I'm doing my investments. I'm looking, I'm looking at stocks that are underperforming at that time and uh, I just buy them and hold them uh, for the long term. So. Pfizer is a, a another stock in the uh, Dow Jones. Um, the Dow Jones, if you guys don't know, is comprised of 30 different blue chip stocks. And, and all of the stocks in the Dow Jones, they're profitable. Uh, their markets are all matured. They have a large market cap. Um, you can't really, I don't think that you can really go wrong if you're investing in any of the stocks in the Dow Jones or in the S&P 500. And um, if you're a beginner, don't do individual stock picking, please. Just invest in an index fund or an ETF. So I'm going over a lot of ideas, a lot of strategies that I've learned throughout the years, and I'm going over them really quickly. So uh, I'm gonna gloss over a lot of things because I'm just running through my portfolio as fast as possible. So if you guys want, just go watch some of my older videos where I talk about all of these strategies. So the next stock on my portfolio is AGNC Investments, and this has to be one of the most hated stocks on all of YouTube. When I started investing in this stock, that's when a lot of people started to come after me, making fun of me of why I was buying it and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter what you buy as long as you can make money on it. That's the number one rule when it comes to investment. It's do not lose money. But uh, I'm just generalizing right now. Um, a lot of you guys are following me for AGNC and uh, right now it is a little bit um, overvalued. So I'm not gonna be buying AGNC um, at the moment, and I'm actually waiting for another pullback to reinvest um, any capital into here. Um, AGNC is a monthly paying dividend stock. It is in the REITs sector. Uh, my total return so far is $50, and that's not including the dividends that I've been collecting over the, over the past year. This month, I collected a $8 dividend from AGNC, and uh, my highest dividend was from July. I collected $20. I think I owned over 100 shares during this time, but I've been experimenting with buying and selling uh, this one stock and um, the next stock that I'll be talking about as well. So I do trade a bit, uh, but I've scaled back my trades recently and um, recently I've just been doing a lot of buy and hold. Whenever the markets are doing really well, it is better to just buy and hold than doing a lot of uh, trades in my opinion. So the next stock here is the second most hated stock on YouTube, and that is PSEC. This is a monthly paying dividend stock as well. AGNC and PSEC are a lot riskier than uh, investing in blue chip stocks, but with risk comes some rewards here in my opinion. And, um, and when it comes to PSEC, I own 126 shares. My average cost is $6.66. Total return is negative $1.56. Doing a boss move here, I'm gonna look at the dividends that I've been receiving this month, I received a $7 dividend, and already from that $7, I'm up 
in my total returns. And if you add all the other ones that I've received throughout the year, I'm up a lot more than just $7. So it seems to me that being a buy and hold investor, you're gonna be making a lot more money than just doing random penny training and swing training and stuff like that. These are some of the stuff that I've learned throughout the year. And um, I'm gonna just gonna keep learning, keep reinvesting. And uh, whatever I learn, you're gonna learn as well. So don't be afraid if you have less capital than me or, uh, or anything like that. You can just watch my videos and you can either see me make money or lose money. But in the past year, I've made some money here. The next stock on my portfolio is Nike. So in the last week, Nike went from like $98 to $100, a, a all time high for Nike. And uh, I own six shares, $84.90. Uh, average cost and uh, total return so far is $90. So again, Nike was one of those stocks where I bought in on the dips. Um, I'm not, so I bought in at around $84, which was the last time that it was $84 was, um, so the last time that Nike was around $84 was in May or June. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier. It does take some courage to buy stocks that are um, undervalued at the time that a lot of investing is kind of backwards. You, you shouldn't be buying stocks when it's at an all time high and you should be buying stocks that are undervalued. But a lot of people get comfortable buying stocks at all time highs, which is right now is probably not a, the best time to buy Nike. And um, so for me, I would wait for Nike to, you know, come around with some bad news again. And uh, that's when I'll be buying into uh, Nike and adding on to my position. So the next stock that I'll be going over is Coca-Cola. Currently it is $55. Uh, I own 10 shares. Uh, I bought in for around $47. I bought in on Coca-Cola during, yeah, so I bought into Coca-Cola around March. And uh, my average cost right now is at $47.96. Total return so far is $70 and Coca-Cola pays a decent dividend around 3%. And um, let me go over the dividends really quickly. So Coca-Cola is one of those stocks that pays dividends quarterly and I've received one, two, three, four, five uh, different quarterly payments here. The latest one was at four, I got $4, uh, which was a few days ago actually. And uh, I received four cents for each and every stock of Coca-Cola that I own. Um, again, if you don't know what Coca-Cola is, you guys are living under a rock. Um, I'm seeing a $70 return total on Coca-Cola for this year. So I only have a few more stocks to go, so don't click away from the video. Just keep watching and you guys will see why I'm buying all of these stocks. So IBM was another stock that I bought when they were not doing so well. And that's why it's kind of cool to have a smaller portfolio. Um, whenever all of your stocks in your portfolio are doing well, you can start to look at other stocks that are not doing well that you can add to your portfolio. And that's what uh, IBM was for me. IBM is doing a lot of work with cloud computing, AI development. So there's a lot of potential there when it comes to uh, this sector and technology. And IBM is paying around like a 5% dividend somewhere around there when I started buying here. So I have four shares. Uh, average cost is $135 and total return so far is only $1. So this stock has been pretty volatile in the last few months. I've only owned them for less than three months. And it's one of these stocks where you can get in right now and uh, potentially see a bigger return later. So the next stock in this portfolio is Apple at $279. Uh, Apple, what can you say about Apple? Um, I only own one share of them. I bought in at $149. If I knew that Apple was gonna go to $280, I would have bet my life on this stock during this time. Uh, total return so far is $131 and um, it's pretty crazy because I remember during this time, maybe last year, a lot of people were telling me that I shouldn't be investing in a lot of those risky stocks that I was during that time and just put all my money into Apple. And if I listened to them, I would have made a lot of money. Uh, let's take a look at the dividends that I've been receiving for over the last few years, for over the last year. Uh, 77 cents, 77 cents, 77 cents, 73 cents. So Apple has been raising their dividends at least one time since I own them. And um, if we if we know anything about Apple, uh, you know, I'm using an Apple phone right now, Apple iPhone. Um, Apple, I don't think they're gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. But right now, I don't think it's a great time to in start to invest into Apple. Um, I would wait for it to pull back a little bit. If they don't pull back a little bit, that is fine too. They're just, if you take a look at the graph, they're just stair-stepping their way up into the right, which is, 
It's something you want to see if you're an investor in Apple. For the last stock, and the newest stock in my portfolio is Energy Transfer. Um, I bought, I started buying this stock um, maybe two or three weeks ago, and uh, I own 17 shares. Average cost is $11.50, and um, I've already seen a $27 gain uh, return in this uh, from this one stock. So one thing about Energy Transfer, I think their estimated value should be around $20. So there is a lot of gain there. There's still a $7 gain that. I might potentially be able to see if I just hold on to this stock. And if it does hit $20, I would be selling some of my stock into uh, from Energy Transfer. Um, Energy Transfer is a higher risk play. Their dividend yield is around 10%. So if you are uh, planning to buy some Energy Transfer, don't bet your life on them. Just uh, invest a small amount of your portfolio into them. So I've already shown you the total returns from the biggest positions in my portfolio. And now I kind of want to go over my biggest regret. Uh, I think we all know that Tesla has been doing really well lately. They've been crushing it. They're almost at like $420, 420, uh, Elon Musk favorite number. So I made the biggest mistake when it came to Tesla. I was buying Tesla during the dip, but I got scared. I got really scared. I had no courage. I had no heart. I couldn't handle that volatility. I started to make a play with Tesla around April. And when it came to July 25th, that's when I sold my shares in from Tesla. I sold one share. He, I think I own a total of like two shares at one time. And um, I've lost a lot. So let's take a look at just from here. Uh, I, I sold at $228. And if I kept them, I would have made if I kept both shares, I would have made almost $400 return from Tesla. Growth stocks, they grow. And uh, you're not gonna see any dividends from growth stocks, so that's one of the reasons why I started to sell Tesla. Um, very, it was very volatile, and um, I just started a new um, investment strategy, and just Tesla was did not fit that criteria. But uh, yeah, this is the worst, this is the biggest mistake that I made. Um, if I knew, you know, in hindsight, if I knew, I would have kept it, but uh, obviously, none of us here can predict what's going to happen in the stock market. Uh, it could crash any day now, but it might not crash. We can see continuously uh, new all-time highs for 2020. Who knows? Um, I'm not going to be that guy that tells you that, uh, you know, be careful. It's going to crash and stuff like that. I'm not going to be one of those guys. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post there pretty much daily. And if you guys want to see more videos from me, go check out these videos here. Leave me a like, subscribe to the channel if you want more content just like this. Um, hit that notification to get my next video. I love you 3000 and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Robinhood challenge portfolio update for 2019. Yeah, we're done.